X, is that all right? The degree of N of X is the top one, which is one. What is the degree of the denominator? Two. Which is bigger? Two, right? So the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator. So which case is that? One. 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 That's case one. And in case one, what's my horizontal? Y equals zero. And this is what when I draw it? Dotted line, horizontal line that I draw all the way across, right? Bolded across everything. No? What, just at the ends? Just at the ends, right? Dotted, horizontal, ends only. That's it. That's all the information. Now we put all that information on a graph. And what we're going to see when we do that is that this is still not enough to draw it. We're going to need a little bit more. And that's where the test points will come in. But um, we're, we're on step G right here. Okay, so step G. Plot all the information in parts A through F. Use this information to determine test points. So for G, I'm going to erase this. Give myself plenty of room here. X, Y. What was the first piece of information I had? An x-intercept, where was it? Negative 5 thirds. Negative 5 thirds. Where is negative 5 thirds? It's like between negative 1 and negative 2. So like here's negative 1, here's negative 2. It's like somewhere around here. Negative 5 thirds. That's an x-intercept on my graph. All right. What was the next piece of information that we got? Vertical. Verticals. Where were they? Negative four and six. Negative four and six. So I come over here to negative four. And what do I draw? Draw a vertical line all the way, right? And I'm going to draw it in a different color just because I want you to understand that this is not part of the graph, right? That's not part of the drawing. It's just to help me draw. Where else do I have one? Six. Six. One of the common mistakes that I see when people go to draw the verticals is that they do this. They draw the vertical and then they put a dot here. I don't know why they put a dot there, but they do. And then later on when they're trying to draw it, they're like, oh, that, that's part of my graph and they try and go through it. So don't ever put a dot where a vertical Asymptote is. What was the next piece of information I had? Horizontal. Horizontal? At the end. That I draw at the ends only. And where was it? Zero. Y equals zero. So Y is zero is going to be the X axis. And it's only at the ends. And over here, at the end only. Everyone see it? Was there any other information I had? No. Now, let me explain to you why this is not enough. I'm going to draw a picture right now. And I want you to tell me, don't draw it, OK? Don't copy me. But I want you to tell me whether or not this is correct, whether or not this could be correct. Doesn't this horizontal draw me towards it on the end? So my graph could go like this, towards that. And then this vertical barrier could force me to go down forever like that, right? Is that possible? And then over here, I could have, like from here, I could say it's going this way, and then the vertical forces it up. And then maybe it just, I don't know, crosses through here, comes across here, and then gets to this vertical, and then dives down like that. Would that be OK? But it could be the other way. 
And over here I could do, I could do this. And that, would, that picture would satisfy everything that I've come up with as far as information is concerned, right? But someone else might walk in here and say, no, 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 do it this way instead. And that would still satisfy everything. Or someone else may have said, all right, no, I don't want it to do that. I want it to do like almost like a parabola touch here and then come back this way and go up like that. That would still satisfy everything. Do you see? So this is good, but it's not enough. And this is where the test points come in. If I, if I pick a point over here and I plug it into my function, it's either going to land above or below, isn't it? And once it lands above or below, I will know which side of this I'm on. Same thing with over here. I can do the same sort of thing. Test some points and then get a real, uh, exactly nail down exactly what this function is supposed to be doing. All right? So the question becomes, how many test points do I need to, to get it, to be happy? You're going to need, do I say in there? David. What? Oh, the notes on Canvas. Yes. They're open, right? All these notes? These weren't on there? No, just on the app. Really? Oh, I'm sorry, David. I thought they were. OK, I will, I will make sure that I check to make sure that they're, they're there. At some point soon, the notes are going to go away. But I, th I think this is the last section I have. I think he just checked. Did you just check? Yeah, they're not there. OK. I'll, I'll make sure they're up there. All right, so the test point thing is you can just start testing points just arbitrarily, but there's a more systematic approach to it. What you do is you look at how many x-intercepts did you have? So I had x-intercepts. I had one of them, right? How many vertical asymptotes did I have? Two. So one x-intercept, two vertical asymptotes, that is a total of three, right? You should then have four test points. You'll always have one more test point than the number of x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes together. So if I had two x-intercepts and two verticals, I should have five test points. If I have three x-intercepts and three vertical asymptotes, I should have seven, seven yeah, test points. Five. Yeah. Everyone get that? But why? Because that's the, that's the minimum number you would need. You could have 10 test points, but you only need one more than the number of x-intercepts and verticals together. But let's think about why, OK? Can, you want to think about why? All right, so let me point out where the verticals are. There's a vertical, there's a vertical, and there's an x, right? All right. I'm saying you only need four. Right? Four. Over here, to the left of this first vertical, I only need one point. Why only one? Because as soon as I plug in a point, if it lands up here, then I know it has to go like this, right? Could it do this? Could it go like this and then go like that? I'd still get the vertical. I'd still flatten out. Why couldn't it do this? Why couldn't it do this? Why does it have to do that? Because it can't cross the I just, I just crossed the x-axis, didn't I, right here? And I created an x-intercept that doesn't exist. This is the only x-intercept that exists. You see, so these problems, when you get your test points, I think I put, um, well, I just put on there, put it all together, OK? You have to actually think through this a little bit. Once you have this point, there's only one scenario possible, flattening out and going off to infinity. That makes sense? OK. So that would be one test point. There's one of them. Then here's the vertical, here's the x-intercept. There's going to, there needs to be one in between here. So let's say I pick something in here and it lands up here. Then think about this. I have to go and draw my graph continuously, right, without picking up my pencil on its domain. This vertical barrier is going to stop me. I have to either get to the vertical and go up or I have to get to the vertical and go what? Down. Which one is the only possibility? Up. Why can't I go down? I would create an x-intercept. Why can't I go, all right, I'll come back this way. 
<laughs> Why is it stupid, though? There you go. Because I just drew something that's not a function. It just failed the vertical line test. Right? So at the end, when you're done drawing the whole picture, you need to look at it, step back, and go, does it pass the vertical line test? It has to. So you can't just start you know, circling back on yourself like this. Does that help? So I know from here, if, if my test point landed here, I would have to go up. And then if I draw it to the right, I have to touch this, don't I? I mean, it's an x-intercept. I have to get to it. So I get to it. But the question now becomes, do I actually cross through or do I touch and come back up? Well, that's what my next test point's going to tell me. See? Here's my next vertical. Here's my next. Here's my other x-intercept. Just any point between here and here. So let's say I, I plug in this point and it turns out to be down here. Then that tells me that I have to go from here to here. Why couldn't I touch and then come back? I would create an x-intercept. So I have to go here. And then from here, what would I have to do? I'd have to go down. Because again, I can't come back up and create an x-intercept. Why can't you just look at the multiplicity of the factor you use? Because you also have to look at the multiplicity of what's going on upstairs on the top. And it gets a little more complicated. The test points are kind of a, a solid way of doing it. And then over here would be the same thing, right? Up or down, and then you'd know what happens. Does that kind of help you understand why? Yeah. All right. Now, the test, when it comes to the test points, you are free to pick anything you want, OK? You just have to pick it from those four regions. So you need to pick a test point that's in between each x-intercept and vertical asymptote, and you need one on each end. So somebody give me a list of test points here for me to, to use. OK, test points, negative 5. So that would be over here, right, negative 5? I need to somehow represent negative 5 here to let you know I'm picking it. One thing you could do is just like circle negative 5 to let everyone know that's what you're going to test. What I don't recommend you do is put a dot there. Why? Because now you think that's part of your graph. That's not, I'm just saying I'm going to test this point and I'm going to plug it in and it's going to throw me a point up here or down here. Could it throw me a point on here? It better not. That means you missed an x-intercept in your work. So it's either going to be up or down. Where's my next test point going to come from? Three. Between here and here. Negative 2, negative 3. Could I pick negative 2.5? Sure, but I mean, why, right? So negative 3? You want negative 3? Over here, you want me to plug in 2? I heard 2. 2. Could I plug in 1? 0? Negative 1? Right? OK, so anything I want. Um, I'll say two because that's what I heard first. Seven. Seven. Could I plug in a uh, hundred? Yes. yes. So everyone might have a different set of test points. Now, what are you doing with these test points? Testing them. Into the original, function. the original function. The original function. So let's write down the original function over here. It was f of x was equal to 3x plus 5 over x squared minus 2x, 2x minus 24. Now, does everyone appreciate the, um, the pain in the butt this would be to have to plug these in? I mean, you could do it, right? It's going to take a little bit of time, right? It's going to take a little time, but you could do it, right? Get, get in a number. Yes? Yeah. There's a shorter way, though. It's the way I prefer. And it, it's based on the idea that we really don't even care what the number actually is. All we care about is whether or not it's what? Uh, above or below. Right? That's all I care about? If it's above, that tells me what it looks like. If it's below, it tells me what it looks like. So if I, instead of looking at this, I look at its factored version. it will be much easier for me to determine. Let me show you how, OK? See if you follow this. Let me test first negative 5. If I test negative 5, tell me what would happen if I plug negative 5 in right there. I get 3 times negative 5 would be 
Negative 15. What's negative 15 plus 5? Negative 10. It's a negative number? I would get a negative number on top of, that's a little negative sign circled, on top of what's negative 5 right here? Negative 5 plus 4. Negative 1. That's a negative number, right? Times, because that's multiplication between, right? What's negative 5 minus 6? Negative 11. That's another negative number. What's two negatives multiplied? A positive. So this equals a positive on the bottom, and on the top, a negative. And when you have a negative divided by a positive, you get negative. So what I know is that when I plug in negative 5, I actually get a negative number. I don't care where it is. That's much faster than actually plugging negative 5 into everything. Make sense? Why can't I do the same thing I did here, here? Like, why can't I say, OK, negative 5 in here, the top is negative. Why can't I do? This is not multiplication down here, right? Like, this is multiplication. So I could say negative times negative, yes, that is positive. But if I say a negative plus a negative, or if I said, you have to know what it is, right? If I say 5 minus 4, that's the, not the same as 4 minus 5, right? A positive number minus a positive number does not mean anything. It could be positive. It could be negative. But as soon as you turn that into multiplication, it's guaranteed. All right. All right, so let's test, let's test the next one. The next one would be what? Negative 3? Test negative 3. I'm trying to keep this all on the camera. And, and then I'm going to come back and erase all this. Testing negative 3. Do you all like this way? Can I stick with this way? Yeah. OK, what do I get on top when I plug a negative 3 in? A positive or a negative? 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 Yeah. Right, it's negative 9 plus 5. So negative on top. Bottom left. Positive. Bottom right. Negative. negative. So you get a negative on the bottom and a positive on the top. I mean, sorry, negative. negative on the bottom, negative on the top, which is positive. positive. You good? Yeah. Giovanna? Yes? Yeah. I just can't see. Oh, OK. That's why you're sitting in front? Yes. I forgot to circle my test points. Here, negative 3. Where was the other one? 2, and then 7. All right, so negative 3 spit out a positive number, right? So anywhere, I could put it down here, I could put it up here, anywhere I want. I'm just going to throw it right there. Then you test 2. That's, if you test 2, the top is a positive, bottom left, positive, bottom right, negative. Positive over negative? negative? Negative. So it's negative. So it's down here. And then if you test 7, it's going to be positive. I won't put it on there, but do you understand what you're doing? OK. So for 7, I'm going to put a point up here like that. Let me erase all this junk now. Can, may I erase my tests? All right, step G is over. Step H, put it all together with a continuous function. So it needs to be a function you can draw without picking up your pencil, except on the verticals. Right? The verticals are going to create breaks in your domain. Draw it without picking up your pencil, and make sure it's a function. Pass it the vertical line test. So what I recommend you do is start left to right. So start at the leftmost point that you have. And imagine that if you're going to draw this without picking up your pencil, you're going to have to draw it to the left and to the right. So if I draw it to the left, what must happen? I must go towards the red, right? And if I draw it to the right, what must happen? The barrier is going to force me down. You all see that? So I'm going to draw it nice and smooth and continuous. I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to go like this. Then, because there's a break in my domain, I must pick my pencil up and go to the next point that I know 
and do the same thing. Draw it to the left and to the right. So to the left, what has to happen? I'm going to have this vertical barrier. It's going to force me to go up. Then I'm going to do what? To the right, I've got to get to here, right? So it's like we're back in kindergarten now. Connect the dots. There's nothing in my way, right? There's no barriers. I need to connect down to this one. I keep drawing and then I'm like, uh-oh. Vertical barrier. Down. It's going to have to go down. It can't come up because there's no x-intercepts. So now that I kind of get see all that, I'm going to try and draw it nice and smooth and continuous like this. Like that. I must pick up my pencil to get over the domain break there. Get to my next point, to the left. It's got to go up, to the right, to the, mag to the horizontal, to the magnet. I was going to say magnet. Some people don't like that terminology, though. So. That's it. That only took, what, 30 minutes? So I wrote this program earlier, or a while back, where you can just type in. Let me do it. Come on. That was just an example of, of a case one. So 3x plus 5 was the top. And the bottom was, hold on, x squared minus 2x minus 24. Now that's the true graph right there. And here is ours. And they're not exactly the same, right? I mean, it looks like this gets, like it's not quite as steep, it seems to like go more like this. And kind of over here does the same thing, and then it goes like that. But that's not important to us. In this class, it's kind of like, remember with the polynomials, we knew that they would go up and down. We didn't know how high they would go. Same sort of thing here. There's certain characteristics that we kind of like wave our hands at, and we say, yeah, we don't know. But the main things are here. We know where the function is below the x-axis. We know where the function is above the x-axis, below the x-axis, above the x-axis. We know where it tends to go off to what? Negative infinity and positive infinity and how it behaves at the ends. And Make sense? All right, we don't have enough time to start another one. All right, would you agree? But let me see what I've got here. How about for you? I'll give you one. How about as a take home problem for you to practice? It'll be another case one, all right? That way you know you're working with the same exact thing. We'll come back next class and we'll do case two and case three. Not yet, not yet. Let's finish all the cases and then I'll let you loose on those. You have this take home thing, the 15 problems to practice to work on, and then this one um, rational function to graph. So sketch for homework, and let's turn this in, all right? Beginning of next class. How about uh, 5x minus 10? Well, I'm trying to think if I want to change this. I was going to give you a hole, but I'm afraid the hole might mess you up. Do you all want a hole or not? You want a hole? OK. Let me give you a hole. All right, all right. X squared minus 9. And let me see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. X cubed. minus 10x squared plus 21x. Okay. So you try that. This one has a hole, so be careful. All you have to do is remember when you draw your picture, right, when you go through and you do all your stuff, whatever it turns out to be, 
you know, if it does something like that, and then maybe like this, I, I don't know what this looks like, okay? And then let's say you had a hole at, uh, say this was the y-axis right here. Let's say you had a hole at three, let's just say. Then what you do is right here, when you're done drawing, you just put a little hole there. That's all you have to do. Um, <clears throat> imagine a problem on a test where I ask you to graph a rational function and the numerator and denominator are both polynomials that can't be factored unless you use synthetic division. Wouldn't that be a nice test problem? Yes. You know, because that would kind of cover a lot of things, wouldn't it? I give you a polynomial up here, you don't know how to factor it, so you have to create your list and break it up. Then you do the same thing here, and then once you have it factored, you just go through all the steps. No, that would be the whole That's test. That's that would be, I've, given, I've given this next test where it's only had like five problems on it before where you sketch a polynomial, I'll give you like two polynomials, I'll give you like two rational functions. Because like yeah. they take a while. All right, everyone. I guess it's time to say have a good weekend, right? Have a good weekend. It's Wednesday, but I don't see you again until next week, right? <laughs>